code expense is high. So in the last part, we've seen how to create a model. And today we're going to add this form here to our add new to do component. So we're going just to add some HTML inputs there so the user can uh, enter the information about the to do. So here, these are just HTML inputs. So we say input, a name, a type, placeholder, a value, whatever you want. Now, the only thing here in React, this HTML inputs, the value of these inputs is going to be controlled by our component. So now our add new to do component is going to be called a controlled component. So a controlled component, so I'm going to, for example, go and import React, create a function called controlled component for this example, and I'm going to return some a uh, JSX. Now here I'm going to go and type in an HTML input with a type text, for example. Now the value of this input is going to be a variable, a text. And I'm going to go and create this text using the use state hook. And I'm going to initialize it with an empty string. Now, before you just say it, of course, you need to import that. Now, the value of this input here is this text here. And the text is an empty string. So now our input here has a value, which is an empty string. Now, if I go and type something inside my input box, nothing is going to happen. It's not going to change because the value of this input is always going to be the value of the text. And you remember that the value of the text, the only way to change it is in the set text. So when I type in here, I'm not using the set text to change the text at all. So that's what you need to do when you create a controlled component. So you need to add to your inputs an unchanged event. So when the value here changes, you need to run a function that the first parameter it takes in is the event itself. Now our input here is selected using the event that target, and then we get that value or the value of the input using that value property. And now I'm going to set this to our text variable using the set text function here. So now if I go and type in an H in my input, the value here is going to be H. So the text here is going to receive a, a string age. Then the input value now is going to be text. If I type in another one, the same thing happens and so on. So we call this a controlled component because the value of the input is always going to be the same as the value of my text here. So why do we need this in React? Why do we need a controlled component? Because we need a single source of truth. So now I'm sure 100% that the value of this input is the same as the value of the text. So now whenever I want to add an input to my React component, I need to create a state, for example, name, and then I'm going to set the value of this to that variable name and then I always need to add an unchanged uh, event and then I'm going to use the set name here to change the value of the name whenever I type in something in the input. So for example if I want to add an input for age I need to go and set the value of that input to age and then I'm going to change the value of the age using set age whenever the value of the input changes. So this is what we call a controlled component. Now our user needs to take a date and a time for the to do. So in this case, we're going to use the pickers provided by material UI. So we need first to go and install some packages, some peer libraries. Then I'm going to go and import a day picker, time picker and a provider from the this package here. Then I'm going to import date functions utilities from this peer library that we installed. Now inside my function or my component add new to do, then inside the return statement where I return the JSX, I'm going to need an input for the to do and this is going to be controlled. So I'm going to need the text here 
which is uh, initialized when I'm just string. So I'm going to set this value to text and then I'm going to use an unchanged event. So then I'm going to set the text to the event.target value. Now, before using the date picker and time picker, we need to wrap them inside the provider. So I'm going to go and uh, use that provider and then here this takes in a prop called utils and it takes in these date functions utils that we grabbed from our peer library here now inside i'm gonna call the date picker and the time picker now the date picker is just like the input it's uh, it's controlled by our component so i'm gonna go and create a day variable and i'm gonna initialize this with a new date javascript object so now day is a JavaScript day object. Now our date picker needs a value and on change event. So I'm going to say the value is going to be the day and then on change this takes in a function not like this but it's almost the same. So here the unchange here takes in a function where this first parameter is going to be the day returned by our date picker. And then I'm going to set that day to our day variable here. The same thing is going to happen with our time picker. So I'm going to go and create variable time and then the value is going to be the time. And then on change, I'm going to change the time to the time uh, returned by my time picker. So that's it for the pickers. Now we're going to go and talk about these uh, icons. So we're going to use React Bootstrap icons for our app. So I'm going to go and install React Bootstrap icons. So we're going to import our icon and then use it as a component. So whenever I need an icon, I'm going to go to the Bootstrap site and then I'm going to search for an icon that I want to use. So for example, if I need to use the calendar day, I need to go and import calendar day and then use this as a component. Uh, the two props that we're going to be using in our app are the size and the color. So the color of the icon and its size. You can use some variables if you want. You can just uh, hard code them. So the size here is going to be 20 pixels and the color is going to be, for example, green. So that's it for the logic part. Let's now go and see this in action. In the previous part, we have created the model. So if you want to follow along with me in this part, you will need the files from the last part. So go to the repo and then copy the link of the last part and paste it in down a git. So we're gonna now download just the folder of the of the last path then you're gonna need to go and open it and run npm install and you're good to go so let's go and open our text editors and let's go into our add a new to do component i'm gonna create a form i'm gonna add some gsx there i'm gonna first add the class uh, dev with the class name text inside we have an h3 that says add new to do and then an input and this input is going to be control so the time is going to be text and then the value is going to be a text also and then on change we need to change our text to whatever the event that target value is so i need first to go and create that so i'm going to say const text and then set text and i'm going to initialize it with an empty string. So now you can see our uh, input there. I'm gonna use or I'm gonna add a placeholder that says to do and now I'm gonna add an autofocus so when you open the model or you open add new to do form it's autofocused you can type in directly. Now I'm gonna go and add a dev with the class name remind so uh, after this, we're going to add our uh, date picker and time picker. So there's going to be an icon from Bootstrap and then a paragraph that says remind me. Now let's go and uh, search for React Bootstrap icons and copy this. And then I'm going to go to my uh, terminal and run the command. npm install React Bootstrap icons. We need to wait for this uh, a moment, for a moment. Now after this finishes 
I'm gonna go and import that from I'm gonna import the bell icon that we're gonna be using or the icons from React Bootstrap icons we just installed. Now if I go there and refresh you can see my icon is there. Now I'm gonna go and add a dev with the class name called uh, picker or pick day and then here we need a dev with the class name title inside we have an icon calendar day and then a paragraph that says choose a day and then at the bottom here it's gonna be uh, our date picker we're not gonna add that yet let's go and add just the icons for now so we need to grab in or to import the calendar day you can see it there now let's go and add our so I'm going to just copy this and add our pick time dev so it's going to be clock so I need to import that too you can see it there now and now it's going to be here time picker and now I'm going to go and add a dev with the class name pick project so inside it's going to be another dev or a title a title and here it's going to be uh, a palette it's going to be choose time and it's going to be choose a project so I'm going to input the the icon so you can see it there and then we're gonna render all the projects we have none for now so I'm gonna just hard code them until we get them from our Firebase uh, database so here I'm gonna add two projects uh, one personal and work project I'm gonna set this to active so this is the one for example the user choose uh, to add uh, the to do to it now I'm gonna add uh, two buttons one to cancel so to close our uh, form or, or the model and one to confirm and add the to do so inside is going to be a button now on the cancel I'm going to set the show model to false so I need to to import the X icon so now when I click on it you can see that it closes the model I'm gonna change its size to 40 pixels so now we need to uh, add in the date picker and time picker so I'm gonna go and initialize the day with the new date JavaScript object I'm gonna create another one for the time And now let's go for to our material UI pickers. We need to install this. I'm gonna open the terminal. I'm gonna install a peer library of my choice. So now after this finishes. I'm gonna need to go and import the provider so I'm gonna go and wrap the whole thing all my all, the whole form uh, inside my my provider here so the whole form is gonna be uh, wrapped inside inside my provider And this is gonna takes in some some props utils. I'm not gonna use moment utils. Sorry, I'm gonna use this one because this is the one we installed. Now I'm gonna grab that and put it here. Now I'm gonna need a date picker and a time picker. So we need to import them first. So date picker and time picker. Then here it's gonna be the date picker and it's gonna be 
the time picker they are both controlled so I'm gonna add a value there this is gonna be day and on change I'm gonna set day to day returned by our date picker and there it's gonna be the same it's gonna be the value it's gonna be time and then on change it's gonna be changing the time to the time returned by our time picker or the time the user picked So let's go and click on that and you can see that they are working. Now let's go and style. So I'm going to go and open my app.css file. I'm going to add all the styles from, for my form. So here for the form itself, it's going to be a padding of one RAM and then a width of 500 pixels and then I need the background uh, of white color so I need to take this off from the container this is from the last part now we need to add a border radius of 4 pixels and then for the add new to do a form and then the text and then my input its width is gonna be uh, or the padding is gonna be one rem and then the width is gonna be uh, we have a typo here so form not from so then the width is gonna be 100 percent the margin bottom is gonna be of 0 0.5 rem and then the border it's gonna be none and also the font size is going to be 1.2 rem now I need to uh, add some style when I focus so I'm gonna get rid of the outlines I'm gonna set this to none so when I type in inside my input I want a border bottom and that's cool now let's go and add some style into uh, remind dev I'm gonna set the display to flex and then align items vertically set that the center I'm gonna add in some padding 0 0.5 rem and therefore our form then all the paragraphs the margin left is gonna be 10 pixels now for the titles, all the titles are going to have the same styling. Display is going to be set to flex and align items center and then some margins, margin bottom to 5 pixels. Now for the pick day and the pick and the pick uh, time so it's going to be 1.5 RAM the same is going to be for pick date or pick time but you can see that we have a gap here so I need I need uh, to style each one separately so the padding here is going to be 1.5 RAM for top the same from the right the bottom is going to zero and the left is going to be 1.5 RAM. So that fixes the problem. Now for our pick project, it's going to be some padding of 0 0.5 RAM. And then for uh, the projects, for all the projects, so I'm going to set display to flex and then some padding of one RAM the bottom is gonna be set to zero and now I'm gonna add some styling for each project so I am gonna add a border one pixel solid with a blue color 
I'm gonna add some uh, border radius and then some padding five pixels and then some margins also five pixels and now the cursor is gonna be a pointer now let's go to my add new to do if I have many projects there so I'm gonna just copy this you can see it goes beyond my form so I need to flex wrap this and that fixes the problem now let's go and add some styling to the project when it's uh, selected when it's active so I'm gonna set the background color to the blue color and the color of text to white and then I'm gonna style my uh, two buttons the cancel button so I'm gonna set the position to absolute and top to zero uh, here I need to say uh, a class dot cancel the right's gonna be five pixels and that's good the cursor is gonna be a pointer now I'm gonna style my add to do button so the position is gonna be absolute the bottom is gonna be zero and the left is gonna be zero also the width is gonna be 100% uh, now it's uh, style the actual button so the width is going to be 100 percent the height is going to be 40 pixels the background is going to be blue the color is going to be white and then the font size is going to be one pound ram we need to set the border to none the border radius is going to be zero zero and then four pixels four pixels now the cursor is going to be pointer now you can see that our button here is covering our projects so we need to go to our add new form and then for the bottom pattern we're gonna add 40 pixels to one RAM just the height of our button so now that's it for this part we have finished our form and take care